Right now, a clear but cool Saturday ahead as farmers market vendors head inside the newly renovated Garver feed mill for the first market of the new year. And overnight, Iranian leaders are mourning the death of the country's top general as they make new threats against the U.S. The impact that could have on America's security and the price you could pay at the pump. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning and thanks for starting your day with us here on News 3 Now. It's Saturday, January 4th. I'm Keely Arthur in with meteorologist Dana Fulton. Great to have you. Yes, I love mornings. I'm a morning person, so this is fine. This is perfect for you. <laughs> I am more of a night owl, so uh, I'll have to take your lead. We can switch at some point. That's, okay, that's deal. <laughs> right now we're waking up to some clouds currently that's going to continue to stay mostly cloudy for the next few hours. Uh, we do have some flurries actually around the airport, but by this afternoon it's going to be really pleasant outside. We're expecting part sunny skies and temperatures above average. There'll be a small chance for some flurries tonight heading into Sunday morning and then Sunday afternoon is actually going to be just a little milder. Temperatures just climbing right on up for this first weekend of 2020. Here's a live look with our Edgewater sky cam. You can see still cloudy outside. Temperature wise, we're close to 30 in the upper 20s right now around Madison along the state line. For those of you waking up in Monroe and Beloit, a little closer to about 31 degrees. The light breeze from the north northwest. Now we'll stay in the low 30s for a little longer. And then heading into this afternoon, we climb to the mid 30s. So not a big climb today. But once we get rid of this cloud coverage, we'll be able to enjoy that sunshine later this afternoon. And we've really had a mild start over the last several days of 2020. So the weekend uh, kind of lines up with what we've already been experiencing. Right. We're kind of spoiled. I feel like sometimes we have these days where it's really warm and then oh, they yeah. go away. But it looks like it might be still pretty mild tomorrow. Still pretty mild for tomorrow. And then also those overnight lows not dropping too low. That's always been a good thing. Yes. All right. Thank you, Dana. Well, we turn it over to Iran, where the country's president, Hassan Rouhani, visited the house of General Soleimani to pay his respects to the family of the prominent general killed by a U.S. airstrike. Rouhani spoke to Soleimani's wife earlier, calling the strike a, quote, big mistake and adding that killing Soleimani is one of the U.S.'s biggest crimes in history. Following Soleimani's assassination, major U.S. cities, including New York City, are taking immediate steps to protect key locations, although there are no credible threats right now. The NYPD commissioner said this morning that, quote, developments abroad are forcing the department to ensure the safety of New Yorkers. Iran is reportedly vowing forceful revenge in response to the killing. And a number of lawmakers are reacting to the President Trump-ordered airstrike and his decision to to bypass Congress with that airstrike. U.S. Senator Ron Johnson said in a statement that Iran is the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism and that it's time the country de-escalates and pays for its terrorist attacks. And in a statement, U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin acknowledged that General Soleimani was responsible for the deaths of hundreds of Americans, saying it's good he's gone. But she wants the president to explain to Congress and the American people his plans to de-escalate tensions in the Middle East. Meanwhile, there is concern that gas prices could spike as a result of all this rising tension. AAA says there hasn't been an immediate impact on gas prices, but experts are closely watching trends. Right now, the price of crude oil is up within the global market, and AAA says we probably won't see that increase trickle down to Wisconsin drivers unless oil prices stay up for about a week. If the situation escalates uh, to the point where it does begin to actually impact oil production or distribution, get, getting the oil out of the Straits of Hormuz uh, and to other areas of the world that need it, um, remains to be seen. About a fifth of the world's oil goes through the Strait of Hormuz, even though not much of that ends up in America. AAA officials say any issues with distribution in the Middle East will have an impact here. A suspected armed robber who barricaded himself inside a Rockford bank for hours with a hostage was taken into custody overnight. Shortly before 9 p.m., a woman who is believed to be the hostage emerged from the bank, followed closely by that suspect. Officers got her away from the suspect, then got the suspect into custody. Police said crisis negotiators were able to convince the man to leave the bank voluntarily. Police say the woman hostage was a bank employee and they don't 
don't believe she was injured. Police have identified the suspect as 39-year-old Nicholas August of Rockford. The situation started at about 2.30 p.m. when police said August attempted to rob the bank and over on State and Mulford Streets. Several roads in the downtown area of Rockford were closed for seven hours during that standoff. And law enforcement officials on the state line say it's still too early to tell the legal impacts weed will have in Wisconsin after it was legalized in Illinois. On Wednesday, recreational marijuana launched for anyone over the age of 21. Since then, the Rock County Sheriff's Office has issued two marijuana citations, but says the real challenge will be determining whether or not the drug was bought in Wisconsin or Illinois. We want to look for receipts. We want to ask them where it came from, and hopefully that'll give us some idea whether this is just the local problem that has existed for many, many years, or if this is related to this, this change across the border. Officials say it could take more than a year to determine the long-term impacts legalization will have on our state. More local news now. Car owners will want to listen up. Madison police have a new warning out about parts being stolen, especially if you drive a Toyota Prius. There's a nationwide trend to get valuable metals from a part in that vehicle called the catalytic converter. The price of metals found inside that part has recently skyrocketed, resulting in an increase in thefts. And if getting fit is one of your 2020 resolutions, now is the best time to save on a gym membership. During the month of January, health clubs are offering promotions and deals to win over the New Year's resolution crowd. If you're committed to getting into shape in 2020, experts say you don't have to overspend. Just choose wisely. Consumer Reports has these tips to help you pay a little less. Number one, sign up for a trial run. Most clubs offer free trial passes, so take some classes, try out the gym equipment, locker room, and see if you like the community. Number two, research prices and search for deals online. Discounted websites usually have major deals on fitness classes, trainers, and local gyms. And finally, negotiate a deal. Consumer Reports suggests you go straight to the gym's manager instead of a salesperson. They may be more likely to work out a better membership price for you. And if you need some fruits and veggies and cheese bread and a local farmer fix, the Dane County Farmers Market is kicking off its late winter market this morning at the newly renovated Garver Feed Mill. It used to be held over at the Madison Senior Center. Now anyone coming out is asked to bring cash and their own tote bag. The market runs from 8 until noon today. And Badger fans are starting the weekend on a very positive note after the men's basketball team nabbed its first AP Top 5 road win in four years. Ohio State entered the game ranked fifth in the country, but with less than two minutes to go in the game, the Badgers took the lead and never looked back. The Badgers upset the Buckeyes 61-57. to Nate Reavers led the team with 17 points and nine rebounds. Next up, Wisconsin will face the Illini Wednesday night at the Kohl Center. And the other big sports story of the morning, Jonathan Taylor has officially declared for the NFL draft. He made the announcement on social media yesterday. It's hard to pinpoint just one of Taylor's accolades in his three seasons at Wisconsin, but he set FBS records for rushing yards in all three years, and he's the only player in Wisconsin history to be named a unanimous first-team All-American twice. In his post, Taylor thanked his coaches and teammates. I would cherish the brotherhood and the friendships and the bonds that we've created through these three years. To the fans, thank you for making Camp Randall electric every single Saturday. To my family, thank you for the continuous support through everything. I may be leaving Madison, but at heart, I'll always be a Badger. Thank you, and on Wisconsin. Well, congratulations to him. We'll have to wait until April to find out exactly where he lands. Your time right now, 8.08. This weekend, you are taking a live look over the Capitol, and Dana is tracking some pretty warm weather for you. We'll be right back.
for a clear, easy to understand forecast. Watch First Alert Weather. Good morning, everyone. We do still have some clouds hanging out over us, so that means some areas seeing a few flurries. In fact, out here on the patio right now, we do have a few snowflakes falling on down, but you can barely see it. And it's not going to really impact much of the rest of the day. We'll get these clouds out of here and then we get some sunshine in for this afternoon. If you're trying to head for a jog early, you may need an extra layer right now, but otherwise should be fairly smooth this afternoon. Partly sunny and temperatures above average. Same goes for this evening, and that's not just for running. Of course, if you need to take the dog outside or just do any outdoor plans this Saturday, these light flurries currently not even being picked up on our high resolution Doppler. So it really is just some white snowflakes that you might see swirling around if you step outside or poke your head out the window real quick. Otherwise, once the cloud coverage gets out of here, we have partly sunny skies for your Saturday with temperatures climbing a little bit this afternoon into the mid 30s. Right now we're close to about 30 degrees, so not a big climb with our temperatures today. Overnight we become mostly cloudy again, starting off your Sunday with a few flurry chances. Here's a look at about 8 o'clock. Notice most of that snowfall is going to be north of Madison. We aren't expecting any accumulation, but around the Dells, uh, you may be dealing with a little light snow at times passing on through. By Sunday afternoon, yet again becoming partly sunny with high temperatures close to 40 degrees. So a really big jump for Sunday afternoon. It's going to be very mild outside and, and really just quite pleasant for this first weekend of 2020. Doesn't really feel so much like winter right now. For Monday morning, here's 7 o'clock as you're getting ready to head back into work. It does seem like we're going to have a pretty decent start to the day with partly sunny skies for your first day of the work week. No need for the Monday blues when we're having that sunshine. Right now we're at 29 degrees in Madison. Again, there are some light flurries outside. Uh, but I doubt you'll even need the windshield wipers as you're heading anywhere. Later this afternoon, we'll see high temps in the mid 30s with a partly sunny sky, so it is going to be uh, pleasant later today. Again, we just have to wait for the clouds to kind of burn on off. Mid 30s for Saturday. For Sunday, we'll be close to 40 degrees with partly sunny skies. Just a flurry chance early in the day. Otherwise, decent afternoon and evening for Monday. Partly sunny with high temperatures in the upper 30s. And by Tuesday, we'll have our next opportunity for some flurries to build on in. Again, not expecting any accumulation, just some scattered flurries and temperatures staying in the low 30s. Wednesday's our dry day and on Thursday we'll have a chance for a little bit of rain to come through since temperatures will be in the low 40s. Right now this does just look like a rain event at night. It may mix with some snow as temperatures drop to the upper 20s, but again, no accumulation coming through. And for the following weekend, we're back with partly sunny skies with temperatures in the mid 30s. Yeah, rain in January. That is not something you hear very often in no, Madison, Wisconsin. No, not at all. <laughs> All right, Dana, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, a reminder, if you have outdoor plans this weekend, you can download our Channel 3000 Weather and Traffic app. You'll be the very first to know when weather that will affect your day is headed our way with the most up-to-date and accurate weather conditions. You can get it for free in your app store. Right now, the FDA is taking unprecedented action to try and stop the teen vaping epidemic. The Trump administration announced a ban on mint, fruit and dessert flavored e-cigarette cartridges that all manufacturers will have to follow within the next 30 days. The ban will not include the sale of menthol or tobacco flavors. Matt Myers, head of the campaign for free tobacco kids, he says banning the flavors is good, but leaving menthol and tobacco vaping products on the market is very dangerous. His group says one third of all e-cigarette users in the U.S. are middle and high school students, and 97 percent of kids use those flavored pots. Odds. Menthol cigarettes are used by more than half of all kids as a starter product. We're going to protect our families, we're going to protect our children, and we're going to protect the industry. The Centers for Disease Control counts more than 2,500 cases of people hospitalized with e-cigarette or vaping-associated lung injuries and 55 deaths. The CDC says the chemical vitamin E acetate found in some vaping products is closely associated with the death and illnesses. Time right now, 8.15, and the race to the Oscars begins this weekend. We have a preview of who could take home the top honors, and our Will Loper is sharing some films and shows that have already won a Awards, and some that may never win, but he just likes anyway. Trending news is just ahead on News 3 Now this morning, Saturday.
I actually want to take a real quick look at traffic right now as there is an accident on the Beltline on 12 and 14 northbound just past the Mineral Point Road exit. The right two lanes completely blocked right now past the Mineral Point exit. Again, this is northbound on the Beltline. Uh, your best bet would be trying to get off and get around on Gammon Road at this time if you're trying to head northbound either up towards Middleton or up to Baraboo if you're heading downtown. Again, this is northbound on the Beltline. Accident about an hour ago and the two right lanes still closed right now. We'll keep a close eye on it. Have another update in just a little bit. Keely. All right, Dana, thank you so much for tracking all that for us. Let's take a look at what is trending this morning. The number of films directed by women reached a record high in 2019. A new USC study found that more than 10% of last year's highest grossing films were directed by women. Like Greta Gerwig's Little Women, other box office hits directed by women include Hustlers and The Farewell. Two of the top 10 most successful movies, Frozen 2 and Captain Marvel, were co-directed by women, and that's a big jump from 2018 when just four and a half percent of the top films were overseen by women. And you know them as Hansel and Gretel, but now it's Gretel and Hansel. This time, 16-year-old Gretel leads, Gretel leads her eight-year-old brother into the dark woods in search of food and work, but the two quickly discover they are not alone. Just like in the fairy tale classic, there's a witch and some magic, although this film gets pretty dark too. Gretel and Hansel hits theaters January 31st. And a new series on Netflix called Messiah features a man in the modern day Middle East era claiming to be a prophet of God. The 10 part Netflix series poses the question, what if Jesus returned to earth today? It mixes together Judaism, Islam and Christianity, and it's already creating a lot of buzz. All episodes are streaming right now. And it's a big weekend for movie lovers with the Golden Globes airing tomorrow. But first, you can check out a few picks from our very own Will Loper. Here's his three things to watch. Oh, he's back. What'd you do to your hair? You look like a pimp. It's all pretend. I just created a character. Oh, you mind. <laughs> Prepare for the Golden Globes Sunday by watching one of the films up for Best Comedy Picture and Best Comedy Actor. Dolmite is my name, streaming on Netflix now. All my life, people been telling me no. Rudy, sometimes our dreams just don't come true. A man slam a door in my face, I just find another door. I want the world to know I exist. Eddie Murphy stars as Rudy Ray Moore in the true life story of a man trying to make his mark in the world. So he uses every ounce of his charisma and determination to make a movie. In storytelling, it's always best to write what you know. I mean, nothing to talk about my personal life. I deal with the nightlife, club owners and mobsters and lots of pimps and kung fu. Do you know karate? No, but I'm a fast learner. I can learn how to chop me a motherfucker. Action. Dolomite Is My Name is available to stream on Netflix now. It begins. Newly streaming on Amazon Prime is the film The Aeronauts. We're about to get wet. Is this balloon not the strongest it's ever been? Even so, it can't fight the weather. Oh, God! Based very loosely on a true story, the film follows a scientist and a pilot, played by Eddie Redmayne and Felicity Jones, as they attempt to reach new heights in a hot air balloon in 1862. The gas release valve is frozen. <laughs> Stay alive. Stay alive. The Aeronauts is available to stream on Amazon Prime now. Take my, hand! my name is Flint Lockwood, and I've always wanted to invent something awesome. Finally, today is National Spaghetti Day. So celebrate with Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. But when my little town fell on hard times, all anyone could afford to eat were sardines. And because sardines are super gross, gross. this was my chance to show everyone what I was made of. Conversion of water into food. After his invention goes terribly wrong, Flint Lockwood must find out how to stop gigantic food from falling from the sky and burying him and the rest of the island residents. The machine has a mind of its own. We are about to be in the epicenter of a perfect food storm. No school! I've got to stop the machine. The fate of the world depends on me. No big deal.
Loudy with a Chance of Meatballs is available to rent or buy everywhere now. Happy watching. Those are the three things you need to watch, and this is Will Loper for News 3 Now this morning. And as we mentioned, the race to the Oscars begins this weekend with the Golden Globe. Streaming services dominated this year's nominations, with Netflix bringing in a whopping 34 nominations across film and TV categories. Netflix originals The Two Popes, The Irishman, and Marriage Story each received a nomination in the Best Drama category at the Globes. They're also strong contenders for Best Picture at the Academy Awards next month. When it comes to the acting categories, history could be made this weekend. Aquafina is the projected frontrunner for Best Actress in a Musical or Comedy for her role in The Farewell. If she wins, she'll be the first Asian woman to do so. And there's much more ahead on News 3 Now. Next, we're running through the morning's top stories. Plus, politics and food may not mix at the dinner table during the holidays, but that's certainly not the case on the campaign trail. We're digging into the important role food is playing in this year's big race. We'll be right back. There is a month of fun, free activities ahead for families at the Overture Center. We have a preview of January's Kids in the Rotunda shows, which start today. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. 
Good morning, it's January 4th. I'm Keely Arthur. We're gonna get a check of your weather and traffic with Dana in just a second. But first, here are three things to know as you start your day. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani is starting his weekend with a visit to the house of General Soleimani to pay his respects to the family of the prominent general killed by a U.S. airstrike. Rouhani spoke to Soleimani's wife earlier today, calling the strike a, quote, big mistake. He also said that uh, Soleimani's ass assassination um, could spark major concern for U.S. cities. In New York, they are going to take immediate actions to protect key locations, although there are no credible threats. The NYPD commissioner said this morning that, quote, developments abroad are forcing the department to ensure the safety of New Yorkers. Iran is reportedly vowing forceful revenge in response to the killing. Meanwhile, there is concern that gas prices could spike as a result of these rising tensions. AAA says there hasn't been an immediate impact on gas prices, but experts are closely monitoring the situation. Right now, the price of crude oil is up within the global markets. AAA says they won't see an increase trickle down to Wisconsin drivers unless oil prices stay up for about a week. And Badger fans are starting the weekend on a very positive note after the men's basketball team nabbed its first AP Top 5 road win in four years. Ohio State entered the game ranked fifth in the country, but with less than two minutes to go, the Badgers took the lead and never looked back. The Badgers upset the Buckeyes 61-57. to Nate Reavers led the team with 17 points and nine rebounds. Next up, Wisconsin will face the Illini Wednesday night at the Kohl Center. And switching gears to Dana Fulton. Dana, you are tracking a pretty significant rollover right now. Yes, yeah, so there is an accident on the Beltline right now causing delays not just on the Beltline but also on Mineral Point. So here's a live look at the Beltline near Old Sock Road. The right two lanes of the northbound side are both blocked right now. As you can see, traffic is moving but they've been pushed over to the shoulder and we are seeing delays stretching all the way back past the exit to Old Sock Road and the exit to Mineral Point. So here's where the accident is right now. We have seen on and off delays along Mineral Mineral Point kind of syncing up within those lights change turning red. They back up a little bit more, but the northbound sign backed up uh, for about a mile or two. Once you get past that, things look clear on the Beltline. The southbound side is not seeing any delays right now, but again, this is northbound on 12 near the old Sock Road exit where that accident is at. And both the uh, two right lanes are closed at this time. We'll be keeping a close eye on that throughout the rest of the morning to see if any more updates come on through. As far as your forecast is concerned today, we're expecting a really pleasant afternoon and evening right now. Not too bad outside either if you're trying to get out with a pup or get your own exercise. Doppler radar looks quiet for us currently, but it is cloudy outside right now. It's not until this afternoon that this cloud coverage breaks a bit and gives us a partly sunny sky for later in the day. Temperatures this afternoon will climb to the mid 30s. It's a little above average, but 34 in Madison around four o'clock. Not a bad spot to be in for Sunday morning. Plan on another mostly cloudy start to the day with the chance for some light flurries early in the morning. This chance is mainly north of Madison. For folks around the Dells and Camp Douglas, you will definitely have some light flurries early on, but we aren't really expecting any accumulation along with that. Those flurries pass further east, and by the afternoon, we still have that sunny sky. Uh, we'll see temperatures climb close to 40 in Madison for Sunday. Starting the work week off on Monday, the skies stay partly cloudy overnight. We'll be in the 20s early on in the day, but otherwise, a really quiet start to your work week. Temperatures right now are in the upper 20s. A little bit of a breeze from the north northwest, about 12 miles an hour, so enough that you'll definitely notice it outside, but not much of a wind chill to factor in currently. This afternoon, 34 the high in Madison along the state line for Beloy and Monroe, be a little closer to 36. A very pleasant day, though. For this first weekend of 2020, we're in a pretty good spot. Mid 30s today. Tomorrow, we're looking at high temperatures closer to 40 degrees. We may see a flurry early on, but otherwise, Sunday, expect partly sunny skies. We'll have a few more flurry chances through the work week, but not a lot of snow coming through and not expecting any accumulation along with that. That's a quick look at your forecast, Keely. All right, thank you, Dana. Anyone looking to get rid of their Christmas trees have one last chance to have it picked up by Madison Street Crews. The first round of curbside was Thursday, but there is one more opportunity on January 21st. To make sure your tree gets picked up, you have to remove all the decorations and place it on the terrace or road edge. And politics and food may not mix at the dinner table during the holidays, but that's certainly not the case on the campaign trail. Less than one month away from the first votes of the 2020 election being cast in Iowa, one thing we've noticed is out on the trail, food is a way candidates connect with voters. And Ed O'Keefe has more. 
In South Carolina, it's fish. In Iowa, it's steak or corn dogs. In New Hampshire, they serve up politics and eggs. The candidate speaks and then signs wooden eggs. Anywhere you go with the candidates, there's cameras and catering. Throw me some more seasoning, would you? It helps draw a crowd, fuels the campaign, and offers the candidate a chance to connect with people. Let's not flounder. Let's get out there and kick some bass. The big thing with food is the idea that it tells us important things about who you are. Emily Contois is a food and media scholar at the University of Tulsa who studies the intersection of food and politics. With a presidential candidate, the hope is that by getting to eat with this person or seeing them eat a food from your local area, that you get a better sense of who they are as a person. But sometimes watching a politician eat can leave a bad taste in the mouths of voters. Remember when Gerald Ford ate a tamale without removing the husk? Or when George H.W. Bush said he didn't like broccoli? And I haven't liked it since I was a little kid. And I'm president of the United States. And I'm not going to eat any more broccoli. Or that time Gary Bauer fell off a New Hampshire stage while flipping pancakes. When John Kerry ordered Swiss cheese on his Philly cheesesteak, the city of brotherly love loathed him. And recently, Pete Buttigieg got fried online for slicing a cinnamon roll and eating it like a chicken wing. My hope is that instead of us harping on candidates when they make these mistakes, is that we encourage them to ask questions, right? When you go into a restaurant that you've never been to before, to say, I haven't had this, but I'm so excited to try it. Over the summer, we stopped in Columbia, South Carolina at the world-famous Clyburn Fish Fry, hosted by House Majority Whip Jim Clyburn. It was his largest ever. More than 4,400 fish sandwiches served for thousands of voters there to see nearly two dozen candidates. Here we go. Moment of truth. Mm. That is good. Did you pass your test? Oh, of course you did. In Iowa, the state fair is a must stop for any presidential contender. There's corn dogs to eat, pork chops to flip, and ice cream to lick. In September, candidates headed back to Iowa for a local Democratic steak fry. And this weekend, you're catering for? 10,000 attendees at the Polk County Democratic Steak Fry. How many of these steak fries have you been to through the years? Oh, I don't know, a bunch. While voters eat, candidates flip steaks and buy the beer and try to prove they've got what it takes. Are the crowds coming for the politicians or are they coming for the food? Uh, I think the politicians are like a la mode. <laughs> little food joke. Senator Amy Klobuchar thinks that catching up with voters over a meal is essential for any politician. They may do it over a root beer float or over a Tiny Tim donut, but they talk to you. And that's what you want to have as a politician. You don't want to become so insulated that the only people you hear from are on Twitter feed. And that's why I think it's so important to go to things like state fairs and eat the food with the people. January is the start of a new decade and a new year. So if you're looking for a great way to kick it all off, you can head over to the Overture. Mary Rose Eckberg is back in studio this morning with a very jam-packed lineup. Good morning. Thank you for having me back. So you said that you have a lot to run through. So let's start right now. Yeah, so this month in January, we're starting off after the new year with Truly Remarkable Loon, who will be teaching audiences about the laws of gravity in his fun-filled juggling and comedy show. After that, the audience is invited to check out our indoor playground which is courtesy of MSCR's fit to go program and then next week on January 11th we will be presenting monkey business Institute in the rotunda which is a huge local favorite um, that's an improv comedy show so the fun thing about improv is that every show is different so if you want to come back for multiples you are always welcome to um, and there's gonna be lots of chances to get on stage at that show after that performance the audience can check out free family yoga courtesy of little Om big Om. those are 30 minute sessions between the shows and then the following week we have visiting artist Daniel Barish who's coming all the way from California to be with us and he will be presenting a participatory shadow puppetry show and this is a show that we have uh, not had in several years um, so it's really exciting to have him back and after that show the audience can go across the street to Madison Public Library for art activities and we're gonna close out January with all this stuff going on with our annual silly sing-along with David Landau on Saturday the 25th. So many fun things and you're yeah. right that is a long <laughs> list and I mean January can be kind of one of those 
months where you're stuck inside a lot, mm -hmm. maybe a little stir crazy, was it strategic for you guys to really have a jam-packed schedule? Yeah, I try to do as much as I can in January because I know if the weather is bad, people are looking for stuff to do indoors. Um, and the audience is always invited to come early. We do have a little library in the room, courtesy of Reach a Child. They provide all these books for us. We just restocked it, so there's a ton of new stuff in there. So the audience can check that out if they want to get there early and let the kids run around and read before the show. That's amazing. And are parents very receptive to this? I mean, do, are, do these get very busy? Yes. Um, this is the time of year where I expect almost every show to hit capacity, mm -hmm. um, which is 365 people. Wow. So we definitely recommend that you get there early. We open the space 30 minutes before every show. Um, and we are working on some strategies going forward to try to figure out how to help people still see the show if they can't get there. So stay tuned for that. Oh my goodness, so many great things. Thank you so much for joining us. Great tips for parents, great way to get kids outside or at least outside for a little bit and then back inside for yeah. some really great things. Thank exactly, you. thank you. Well, lots to do for kids and adults alike this weekend. An SNL comedian is in town for several shows at Comedy on State. And local theaters are showcasing some popular bands. Your Weekend 608 is next on News 3 Now this morning. All right, Dana, it is the weekend in the 608. We finally made it, and here's a quick look at what's going on with some help from our partners at Madison Magazine. Tonight, the Wisconsin Jazz Fest is back at the Majestic with Paul Dietrich and his big band headlining at 8 o'clock. And the Mead and Metal Fest at Boss Meadery will feature Madison-based and self-proclaimed most metal band on earth. I love this name, Lords of the Trident. <laughs> Music there runs from 6 until 11 p.m. That meadery is fantastic. If you do, go check it out, or if you're more 
you're in the mood for laughs, head to Comedy on State to see Alex Moffat, a celebrity impressionist and current SNL cast member. Moffat's been on SNL since 2016 and is best known for his celebrity impressions from Eric Trump and Adam Schiff to Kit Harington and William Dafoe. Shows tonight are at 8 and 10.30. And you can head over to the Overture Center this weekend to catch longtime local juggler, comedian, and family fun maker, truly remarkable loon in action. Besides promising to spin plates and unleash spinning monkeys, Mr. Loon will pay tribute to Sir Isaac Newton and the laws of motion. All three performances are free on the Overture's Rotunda stage. You can catch them today at 9, 30, 11, and 1. And of course, for all the best in the Madison area, pick up a copy of this month's Madison Magazine. So many fun things to do. The Farmer's Market is back, too, for the first time in 2020 at a brand new location over at the Garver Feed Mill. And that means the square right now is all there. I'll take a look <laughs> at your full forecast next on News 3 Now this morning. But before we let you go, let's turn it over to Look Who's 3. Happy birthday to all the children celebrating today. We'll be right back. So we're still keeping a close eye on the Beltline this morning as there is an accident just after the exit to Old Sock Road. Here's a live look right now, uh, right at the exit to Old Sock Road. You can see the right two lanes of the northbound side of the Beltline are currently blocked. Traffic is moving 
but it's been reduced down to just one lane and slowly creeping past on the shoulder. So expect uh, major delays if you're trying to head northbound along the Beltline. I would certainly recommend uh, trying to get off before then, taking Gammon Road to get around it. This is due to a rollover right now. Uh, the right two lanes again of the Beltline are blocked. This stretches all the way back to Mineral Point. Uh, you can see those delays. Traffic still moving, but it is slowly creeping through. And then things, once you get past that accident, look fairly smooth along the Beltline right now. As far as your weather is concerned this morning, we're really looking at a great morning for our, our weather conditions. This is Charlie in Fort Myers. Um, I believe that Charlie did not like the penguin. Maybe he did. He's smiling, but uh, the penguin has now been shredded across the floor. Temperatures this afternoon will be in the mid 30s if you try to get out with the pet this morning. It uh, really looks okay. A good morning and afternoon for a dog walk or to try to get out and run. This morning you might need a layer just because it's a little chillier, but in the afternoon we'll have partly sunny skies that'll help things feel a little warmer outside. Doppler radar is quiet, even though we have a mostly cloudy sky right now. By this afternoon, we'll steadily become partly sunny with high temperatures in the mid 30s. For Sunday morning, we become mostly cloudy again with a small chance for some flurries passing through, mainly north of Madison. That flurry chance continues on east around 8 o'clock in Camp Douglas and the Dells. You'll see some snow coming on down, but in the afternoon we get sunshine back through. In fact, temperatures will be even more mild outside for Sunday. We'll be near 40 degrees for those afternoon highs. Monday at 8 o'clock, we're in the mid-20s with partly sunny skies, so we get to start the work week off in a pretty decent spot. Right now it's 28 in Madison. We do have some light flurries swirling around with this mostly cloudy sky. Our breeze at about 12 miles per hour, enough that you'll notice it, so that puts wind chills closer to the mid-20s. Afternoon highs will be in the mid-30s. Again, a really pleasant afternoon expected. Once we get the cloud coverage out of here, it will become partly sunny outside. Mid 30s for Saturday, Sunday we're close to 40 with just a few flurries early, mainly north of Madison. For Monday, upper 30s, with partly sunny skies. And for Tuesday, another chance for some flurries will creep on in. Our next opportunity for any measurable precipitation will be on Thursday. And right now, it does look like rain as temperatures will be in the 40s in the afternoon. That's a quick look at your forecast. All right, thank you, Dana. Well, we've been asking you to share your morning with us and check out this gorgeous photo sent in from Mel Thompson. This is a sunrise from Kansas. What does your morning look like? You can take a picture and post it on the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning, and we will share our favorites right here. And you can stick with News 3 all day long. And then tomorrow morning, we're talking New Year's resolutions with a local dietitian. Her top tips to help you beat the odds and stick to your health and weight loss goals. But first, meet the 11-year-old boy from Minnesota who can see clearly now and is helping give others the gift of sight. We're back in a moment.
Well, welcome back. After an 11-year-old boy from Minnesota got glasses to correct his color blindness, he decided to share that gift with the world. He and his family launched a campaign to raise money to buy the special eyewear for others. Michelle Miller reports. Go ahead, put them on. When 11-year-old Tate Remiger slipped on a pair of these special glasses, his reaction said it all. Just everything looks different. The glasses are designed to bring color into a drab world. They allow the colorblind to see the vivid hues they've been missing. I just like to see what everybody else sees. Tate can do that now, thanks in part to seventh grader Jonathan Jones and his mom, Carol. They're all yours. Back in November, Jonathan got the chance to try out these glasses as part of his science class. That's awesome. And when the video of his tearful reaction to seeing colors went viral, offers to help started pouring in. So many people, both people we knew and people we'd never heard from in our lives, were reaching out to us and sending me DMs asking to give money towards Jonathan's glasses. Jonathan's family set up a GoFundMe page not to pay for his glasses, but to buy a pair for another child. They asked for $350. Before we went to bed that night, we were at $1,000, and we're currently at hmm, 32. 32. That's right. Jonathan and his family raised nearly 100 times more than they had asked, over $32,000. And when the company that makes the glasses in Chroma heard about it, they committed to match the donation, which could provide at least 130 pairs more. I wear these glasses 24-7 because, you know, color is amazing. <laughs> So on a cold morning just before Christmas in Cottonwood, Minnesota, a small group of kids gathered in the gym at the Lakeview School to get their glasses, enabling them to see color for the first time. Amazing, and it's also really um, a big experience for me to see the actual colors to things. Watching other people discover color for the first time. This is what you see. <laughs> is an emotional experience of its own. The Jones family plans to keep their donations in state, but eventually want to help colorblind kids around the country. Michelle Miller, CBS News, New York. That is just the sweetest thing. It was so great. And all the reactions to actually being able to see color the first time, so pure, so wonderful. Yeah, yeah. and oh. the color today, the color pretty today. vivid because it's gonna be nice. Yes, vivid, sunny, it should be a really nice afternoon. We'll be in the mid thirties for afternoon highs with partly sunny skies. Sunday's gonna be even milder. Now we may have a flurry early in the day with mostly cloudy skies early, but in the afternoon we'll get the sun back. Monday also pleasant in the upper thirties. Our next chance for some slight flurries will build in on Tuesday, but really not gonna bring in much. By Thursday, another chance for rain. It does seem like just showers at this time because temperatures will be in the 40s and by the following weekend we still have sunshine so when it comes to winter weather it's pretty mild out there very Katie. mild <laughs> i will take it thank you so much for joining us this morning dana you can hang out with me again tomorrow starting at 6 30.